So you see, drugs are like the invisible lenses through which we view reality. And no culture has been without them. It's just cultures accept some and repress others according to uh, their particular, the particular cultural values which are trying to be conserved. The reason this is not simply armchair speculation among anthropologists is because we now are the inheritors of a planet which is dying under anesthesia. Our entire cultural crisis is predicated on the fact that we cannot feel or connect with the consequences of our history, that we have behaved very badly, we of the high-tech societies, we have trashed gender relationships, we have trashed Aboriginal societies. We have cut down the rainforest. Uh, we have robbed our own children of a future as rich as the future that we expect ourselves to enjoy. Uh, there isn't even a name for this sin where you destroy the opportunity of your own children. I mean, no society has been that perverse. And we're doing it under a massive infusion of alcohol laced with monotheistic moral propaganda. Well, <laughs> what is the antidote to this? Well, it's what I call the archaic revival. It's something that's been going on throughout most of the 20th century, but with increasing depth and urgency. It's that we must reach back into the past to the last sane moment that we ever knew and figure out what was going on then and get with the program and attempt to recover some amount of cultural equilibrium and balance. And I believe that, you know, using the broad brush of generalization, we could say all our problems can be traced down to ego. Ego lies behind private property. It lies behind the domination of women by men. It lies behind dollar chasing. It lies behind all of the maladaptive behaviors, the arms race, the whole thing, it lies behind all of the maladaptive behaviors that are pushing us toward planetary toxification and species Armageddon. Uh, I'm not advocating a return to the style, the religious style that includes orgy. I mean, I wish I could, <laughs> but we are not you know, nomadic pastoralists of uh, 70 individuals. We're a global society of five, million shot, uh, 5 billion shot through with epidemic uh, diseases and contagion and so forth and so on. We can't adapt the orgiastic style on a mass scale without severe social consequences. But we can look back at the use of psilocybin and at least construct a social alternative where small groups of people are using this to um, uh, diminish ego and build community, build communities of like-minded people and diminish the almighty sense of ego. And psilocybin does this very effectively in two ways. First of all, it dissolves boundaries between people. And another way of saying ego is that I strongly distinguish between you and me. You know, that's what ego tells you, is who you are and how important you are and how you're not her or him or that or that. You're this. Psilocybin tends to dissolve that language-reinforced misperception. And the other thing it does is it shows you that behind your eyebrows is a world richer by far than any of the crap that's being peddled on Rodeo Drive or Fifth Avenue in New York City or anywhere else. In other words, 
it shows you the pathetic nature of materialism by reintroducing you to the reality of the spirit, not as a religious abstraction that's used to beat you over the head to follow somebody's moral recipe, but as a felt experience of the indwelling of an extreme power, that a power that connects you to all the life of the past on this planet, to the planetary future, to the universe at large. So really, it's a rediscovery of our birthright as human beings. History is a bad deal. It's a, it's a mass of pottage. It's broken machines and broken dreams because we have projected our value system out into matter and matter has not responded in a satisfying way and so we're then dysfunctionally neurotic, always seeking, never finding. The answer is to go within using the classical tools of uh, self-redefinition, transformation, and ego diminishment. We can re-inoculate ourselves against the ills of civilization by simply availing ourselves to the shamanic tools that were available before the fall into history. And, uh, you know, the fact that this has uh, poses some problem for the currently constituted constabulary is uh, of no concern to anybody who's thinking on a scale of millennia. That's just a kink in the social machinery brought on by stupidity and anxiety. It isn't sufficient reason to turn away from a reasonable program that would carry us toward a group psychology that would then allow us to turn toward the real threats that face us as a species as a, and a planet and do something about it. I put this before you this evening because I think in the absence of this theory, the psychedelic community has no strong argument to lay before society at large as to why these things are so important. But if, in fact, these are the catalysts, these psychedelic compounds are the catalysts for everything that we call humanness, for the very basis of the notion of caring, altruism, civilization, community, if what lies behind these notions is a symbiotic relationship to uh, psychedelic plants present in the environment, then the sooner we return to that mode, the sooner we can overcome the historical dysfunction that otherwise is a death sentence upon us. So I don't advocate this because I think it's easy or because it has a high probability of being accepted and implemented. I advocate it because I think it's the only answer and that it would be gross malfeasance on my part, believing that, to not lay the cards on the table. That's all that I can do, and I hope that if you find this argument convincing, you will find further arguments to buttress it, and we can get this phenomenon out of the closet and into uh, the general theater of debate about the fate of global civilization so that we can begin to make real positive changes because the clock is ticking, folks. This is not a test. I mean, we have to either create some fantastically brilliant forward escape out of the closing, grinding jaws of history or we will be history. Thank you very much. Thank you.